Hello Chocolate Tribe and welcome back. This week we're going to be looking at Hideaway, originally done by Freddie King, but we're going to be looking at the John Mayall and the Blues Breakers version from the amazing Beano album with Eric Clapton on guitar. I've done another video, which is me just playing through all the way with the tab, but in this video we're going to take a slower step-by-step -step look at each lick from start to finish. The track is built on nine different verses, so you can skip through to any particular verse that you want to. I put the timestamps in the video below, so you can just jump to verse three if you wanted and just work on that for a while. So the main thing to point out about this is that it does use a lot of the E minor pentatonics and the E major pentatonics. So if you're not used to using E major pentatonics, I'll just describe an easy way for you to get to them. So, so the E minor pentatonics, the basic shape, starting on the 12th fret with your first finger on E, up three frets to the A string, up two frets, basic shape. Now if you just keep that shape but move it down so that the first note is the E with your little finger, then your first finger goes to the ninth fret on the A string. So that's your E major pentatonic. So you'll see in this song there's a lot of minor bits and a bunch of major bits and then some that just drift between the two. So let's just start with verse one, lick one. Okay, so that is very much the E major pentatonic shape. You're starting on the D string on the ninth fret, then hammering onto the 11, G string on the ninth fret, then onto the 11th fret with a bend. Second lick. So that's very much the same as the first, but with a bit of an extension. So the 9-11 on the D string and the 9-11 on the uh, G string. Except this time, you bring the bend back down and you pull off from the 11 to the 9, back to the 11 on the D string, and then to the 9 on the G string. So, so, so far we have got. So there's a small hammer on onto the 11th fret at the very end of that lick. Hear that again. So the next lick is. So that is, again, on the major position, you're on the D string on the ninth fret, hammering onto the 11. Then to the nine on the G string. And then a double nine on the G string at the end. There we go. And then. So. That fourth lick is very much like one that we've already done. Except hammering, instead of hammering onto the 11 at the end on the G string, there's a couple of chords. And an easy way to describe those is second finger on the eighth fret on the A string. First finger on the seventh fret on the D string. And then on the third finger, we are on the eighth fret on the G string. And if you can, and if you want to, you can bring in that B string as well, also on the eighth. And you just slide in that down one fret. So, so far we've got. So we're halfway through the first verse. So now it's the, we change position and we're gonna to go to the open B string and the open E string. So it's all the way down here. Again, very much a major feel again. Okay, so what that is, is your B string open, hammering onto the second fret the top E string, second fret on the top E string, 
slide up to the four. Then that's an open E, second fret, pull off, and then to the B string on the two. Yeah, and then it's B, open, hammer on to the two, then the top E. So to finish that off, that is open B string, second fret on the G string, back to the open B string, and then a trill on the first fret on the G string. Yeah. So let's string that all together so far. So to finish that off, it's the top E string, then the third fret on the B string, then the slide from the two to the four on the G string, slide it back down, and then pull off. So then it's the second fret on the D string. Back to the top E. Second fret on the A string. And the open B string. And then the second fret on the G string, which is basically the B7 chord. So let's string that whole last section together. So verse two starts on the G string on the second fret, bend it up, then back down. Then you trill on the one and to the open. Then on the D string, second fret, then open, then on second fret again, and then open on the G string to hammer onto the one. And you sort of pull off again on that. So now we're onto the slide. Now for these, there's 13 of these, so it's going to one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so let's just run that again. It goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, so. So take, that can sometimes take a little bit of getting used to, the number of that. After those, you've got the second fret on the G string to the open. And then you've got like a second fret G string bend up and then back down and then to the pull off to the other. Yeah. And then you've got the second fret on the D string. And then you've got back onto the second fret on this G string and then to the open on the G string so it goes so if I do that slowly so now for the next lick you've got this which is on the seventh fret with your third finger on the D string, then your second finger on the G string on the sixth fret, and then your first finger on the fifth fret on the B string, and then you sort of gently scrape. You can hear I'm just... So I'm muting those lower two strings, and then I'm kind of really aiming towards that note there on the fifth fret on the B string. Okay? And then he goes, same notes again. Then it's the seventh fret on the B string. Back to the fifth fret on the B string. So it's back to the seventh fret on the B string, but with a bend. And then I'm going to the sixth fret on the G string. 
then to the fifth fret on the B string. Then I'm going back to the seventh fret on the B string for a bend, but it's a sort of a slower bend. So you hear how the first bend is kind of quick, and then the second bend is kind of got this kind of curve up. So now we're back into this sort of sound, and that's the fourth fret on the G string, third fret on the B string. And it's got a secondary slide up. So once you've done the slide, you end it with this lovely lick. Okay, and what that is, is 5th fret B string, 3rd fret B string, 4th fret G string, then back to the 3rd fret on the uh, B string, then back to the 4th fret on the G string, but you slide down to the 2 and then pull off to the 0. So after that, it then goes over to the D string on the second fret. And then sort of this trill again on the first fret and open on the G string, but just super quick. And then it's onto the A string on the second fret. And then pull up from the top two strings. And then back to the B note, which is the second fret on the A string, and then an open B string, so it goes, yeah? And then you get this second fret on the G string. And that's a lovely little lick that I'm gonna steal all day long. Sounds great. And then after that, you're sort of leading into the third verse, which is actually second fret on the D string. And then the third fret on the low E string with a slight bend. So it goes. And then an open E note of the low E. Okay, and now we're into verse three. Now verse three is a nice little groove. And what that is, is open E string, low E, then your fourth fret on the E string, which is your major third again. So you're very much working in a major world. Second fret on the A string, fifth fret on the A string, back down to the second fret on the A string, and then down to the, then up to the fourth fret on the A string, and then back down to the second fret on the A string, so you can set like this. Now sometimes on when I'm doing that low E, I kind of have my first finger there anyway on the a second fret on the A string, so it kind of gets that chord sound. Yeah, but that's just up to you and how you want to do it. And then, first fret on the D string, you slide into the second fret. And again. Now you just move the whole pattern up a string. Except, when it comes to that slide, you don't move that up a, up a string. It doesn't do that, it stays on the D string. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna move, do two on the E, then move over to the A. You'll hear how that stays the same, even though the other parts have moved string, so it goes. Then we'd go back 
back down to the E. So now onto the B chord. So this is slightly different. It's still the same shape and pattern, but it's actually on the A string and moved up two frets. So I'm highlighting the B, which is first finger on the second fret, and then I use my little finger on the uh, fourth fret on the D string. And then I slide up my to the sixth fret on the A string. I use my third finger there, which is kind of why I use my little finger for the chord because my third finger is kind of ready to use. And then my first finger on the fourth fret on the D string. My little finger on the seventh fret on the D string. Back to the fourth fret. Then to the sixth fret. And back to the fourth fret. So it sounds like... Yeah, you can hear how that sounds the same as what we've done earlier, but just highlighting the B chord. And as before, I'm just going from the D string, first fret, sliding into the second. So that sounds like. And then back to the E version of it, the first time we did. Okay, so to play that whole section through. I don't think I do the little slide up on the very last one. So verse four is where we start to look at some of the more minory things. So we're going to our pattern here, which is starting at the 12th fret. Okay, so we're starting with the 14th fret on the G string with a bend, but you kind of catch the 12th fret as well on the B string. And then you do the 12th fret on the B string, and then the 12th fret on the top B string. So it goes. Yeah. And then the next tick. Again, bending from the 14th up on the G string. 12th on the B, 12th and the 14th. And then bending the 14th again. We're bringing it back down and pulling up to the 12th. And then you move onto the 14th fret on the D string. And then back to the 14th fret on the G string. Then the 12th fret on the uh, G string. So, with a slight pull. Bit of a pause, 14th fret on the D string, and then the 12th fret on the G string. And then again, you're kind of bending that slightly into the major. Okay, so this next part has got two strings playing at the same time. Now, there are lots of different uh, ways of doing this. I've looked at lots of different tabs and they all do this emphasis slightly differently. But this is the one that I do. Uh, it might not necessarily be perfect, but I think it sounds good and it, it's what I, I've been playing. So it's I'm doing the 14th fret on the G and the B string. And then the 12th fret on the same strings, but I'm slightly I'm slightly bending them out of tune. And then ending on the 14th fret on the D string. And then the next time I'm just doing So I'm only strumming the 12th fret part once. Two on the 14, one on the 12, one on the 14. Okay, so for me, this next part sounds like the little finger was moved up to the 15th fret, although the 14th fret's still in action on the G string. And then two on the two on the 14. And then on the 12s on the G and the B string. And now. 
Okay, so this next part is, so Ben from the 14, Ben from the 14 on the G string, and then 12 and 12 on the B and the E string. So the 15 on the B string, 12 on the B string, 15 on the B string again. Then back up to the 12 on the top E string. Back to the 15 on the B string. Back to the 12 on the B string. Back to the 15 on the B string, except this time bending up. So slowly. So the next lick is coming out of that bend. So you've got. Then it's 15 not bent on the B string. 12 on the B string. 14 on the G string. Back to the 12 on the B string. And then. You sort of arch your finger over, your first finger over, to do the 12 on the G string. You see how I'm arching that first finger between the 12th fret on the B and the G string. So to look at that. Now we're back to bending on the 15th fret on the B string. Then unbent on the 15th fret to the 12 on the B string. And that, that is a 14 on the G string bent up, down, and then pull off to the 12th fret on the G string. And then I use my second finger to grab the 14th fret on the D string and then back to the 14th fret on the G string, and then back to the 12th on the G string. But you can see why I use my second finger for the uh, D string 14th fret, because I want my third finger available to do the 14th fret on the G string any second later. Again, it's a lovely little lick that you can use all over the place, completely stealing that. Okay, so the last lick of this verse. Again, a very pinchable lick. This is starting on that minor third, which is the G string 12th fret, but moving up to the major third, which is the 13th fret on the G string. I do that as a hammer on. Then 12th fret on the B and the E string. And again, I'm just using one finger to bridge across both of those. Then to the 15th fret on the B string. And I pull that off to the 12 on the B string. there we were into that 14th fret on the G string so, so you do it straight and then you bend it up and pull it down and then pull it off to the 12 yeah and then to the 14th fret on the D string then back to the 12 on the G string from the minor third hammering onto the major third on the 13th fret. And then back to the 14 on the D string, and then to the 14 on the A string, which is the B note, twice. So to do that slowly. Just again, I'm using my third finger for the 14th fret on the D string so that I've got a really nice clean note on the with my second finger on the 14th fret on the on the, on the A string. 
Okay. We are on to verse five. This is possibly my favorite part out of the whole song. You've got this lovely. Okay, so that is, I these are the fingers I use, but you can do your own way, um, obviously. <laughs> um, it's your third finger on the 11th fret on the G string. First finger on the ninth fret on the B string. And then your little finger on the 12th fret on the top E string. Yeah, so it's two of those, it goes. Love that sound, really kind of dissonant. Especially with that slight drive that I got going on. It really sort of mashes the sound together, lovely. And now we move into the kind of signature. I love playing this. Took me a little while to get it clean. And he also, he pulls back a little bit on the playing, so it's like. And then he bites back in again. So, second finger on the 13th fret on the G string. First finger on the top E string on the 12th fret. Yeah. Then third finger on the ninth fret on the G string. Then your second finger on the top E string on the ninth fret. So. And then move that down two frets to the seven. Then move it down to the second fret and slide it up to the four and then back down and then pull off. So it goes. So let's look at that again. So it does it a third time again. And that's just the two, four, zero. It goes. It's just faster on the third one, okay? And then bites back in again and this is the bite is on the second fret on the G string bending it up releasing it out and then pulling off to the open and then to the second fret on the D string yeah and then to the second fret on the G string again and then again and then open So you got this lovely, dark, light, dark feeling. So let's look that whole section so far together. Yeah. Now this next run is a little bit tricky. Um, it doesn't sound as tricky as I, th I think it is, a little bit to play, to make it play smoothly. And that's just to do with your picking technique. Um, it took me a while I had to think about this. Second finger sliding into the sixth fret on the G string. First finger on the fifth fret on the B string. Third finger on the top E string on the seventh fret. Why do birds? And then first finger, uh, top E string, fifth fret. Little finger on the B string on the eight, seven, five. You're gonna go fourth finger, third finger, first finger, yeah? And then do that pattern again. You're going straight up to the top, seventh fret on the uh, top E string, five, move down a string to the eight, seven, five. And then this time you're gonna go down to the uh, sixth fret with your second finger on the G string. So it sounds like. Yeah. Now that 
walking pattern can be a little bit difficult because that jumping back up to that top E string, you, it doesn't feel natural straight away. So for me anyway. Because I do alternate picking most of the time, the first time I hit that string, that top E uh, string on the seventh fret, I'm plucking down. But the next time I do it, I'm plucking up. So that's kind of where it threw me a little bit because uh, you kind of want to naturally push down. But... Yeah, there we go. And then after that, we got some bends. Now, I fully confess, I'm a lazy player. I don't want to work too hard. I don't want to hurt my fingers. I got heavy strings on here as well. So just generally, I don't want to work too hard. <laughs> so a lot of tabs I've seen around for this. C, uh, Clapton, bending, and then bending really far, and then bending less again. What I'm gonna do is my shortcut. I think it sounds like this is what it's doing, but it probably isn't, but I, it's generally you get the overall same, same sound. So the next thing is to bend from the seventh fret on the B string. Now what I do is I slide up then to the eighth fret and then do it again. And then back down again. But some people say you go. But that's just really is hard work when I can just slide up a fret. Okay, and then on the very last one there, I'm just, I'm just pulling it down, then pulling off to the fifth fret on the B string. And then I'm going to the sixth fret on the G string. And then I'm going back to the fifth fret on the B string. So we've got. So that again is just a bend from the seven on the B. Pull off, release and pull off to the five. And then to the six on the G. Back to the seven on the B and then to the five on the B. Sometimes I throw in another six on the G. But I'm not sure if he does it, but I just do it. So here we're now we get to another one of my favorite licks uh, out of this piece. So you're sliding up to the 10th fret on the B string and you're bending, releasing, and you're just plucking again. And then onto the eighth fret on the B string back to the 10 on the B string, back to the eight on the B string, and then to the nine on the G string. But on those, don't be afraid to boom a bend that in a little bit there. Yeah. And then when you go to this ninth fret with your second finger on the G string, go down to the uh, eighth fret is your first finger. Again, lovely sound. And then back to the nine on the G string. Now to finish that lick off, we're gonna go to the seven on that uh, G string. So it goes. So I'm moving down to the D string. You're going to be doing the ninth fret on the D string, sliding down to the seven. And then pull off to the five. Then back on to the seven. Then off to the five. And then moving down another string to the A string on the uh, seventh fret. Yeah. slide up on the G string back to the ninth fret. Now you can then go seven, nine on the D string, or you can just cut straight to the nine on the D string. So, 
four. Leave it up to you. I quite like both. So let's listen to that whole lick. Yeah, I do quite like sticking that seven in on the D string first. Now it's time for another groovy section down on the low E. So I'm doing like an E kind of little chord, an E5. Then doing the pretty much the same notes as before, but fourth fret on the low E string. So it's two open E's, fourth fret on the low string, and onto the A string on the second fret. And then what that is. So it's the second fret on the A string, so the fourth fret on the A string, so the fourth, the second fret on the D string, back to the fourth fret on the A string. Yeah, and then we just move the whole thing up a, fr uh, up a string. before we now got this B shape on so first finger on the second fret on the A string the little finger on the fourth fret on the D string and then slide up up to the sixth fret on the A string first finger on the fourth fret on the D string to the third finger on the D string on the sixth fret first finger on the G string on the fourth fret back to the third finger on the sixth fret on the D string. Then move the whole thing back down to the A position. And then down a string to the E string. And then to end, I slide up to the seventh fret on the low E string. Let's hear that all together in, in a slow speed. change going on because you're now getting ramped up for the big finale okay verse seven this is where we start to let things rip a bit more okay third finger on the 15th fret on the B string with your first finger on the 12th fret on the top E string to and you bend up the 15th <laughs> Much more boom energy. Hit the next lick. And this is this is 12 on the top E, 15 on your B, 12 on your B, 14 on your G, back to the 12 on the B, then arch your finger over again to the 12 on the on the G, and then 14 pulling off to the 12 on the G. Then it's two on the 14 on the D string and then back to the 12 on the G with a slight bend. So, let to go slowly. to the bend on the B string 15th fret and then come back to the 12th fret on the G string this is where it goes a little bit strange for me it kind of does that does that lick and then 
it does this kind of random weird bendy thing on the 13th fret or 14th fret or 12th fret I, I can't really quite get this bit it just sounds a little bit like there's just a lot of energy and he's really hyped up so i kind of just mess around that kind of feeling the way i generally do it is 13th fret on the g string with some little micro bends and then some So after those kind of weird micro bendy things, you do what you want there. <laughs> um, then it's little finger on the 15th fret on the B string. Bend on the 14th fret on the G string. And then release and then pull off to the 12th. Yeah. Then to the 14th on the D string. And then to the 14 on the G string. And then back to the 14 on the D. So. Then to the 12 on the G. And then back to the 14 on the G with a bend. And then after this boom bend, it's 12, 12 on the B and E. And then it's back to the G string, to the 14th fret, to the small bend, to the um, releasing to the 12th. So when it's played fast, it sounds like... Okay, but to go slow... It's a lovely lick, but it's so fast in the track, it kind of, I kind of think you kind of miss it a little bit. But when you play it slowly, it sounds really groovy, and if you cleaned that up, and added some extra groove in, that's a great little lick. So let's go through this lick one bit at a time. So it's bending from the 15th fret on the uh, top E string. Then releasing to the 50, 12 on the A string. Then it's the 15 on the B string, 12 on the B string, 14 on the G string. Bend, release, pull off. Okay. Yeah. And then the next part is I'm using my third finger to cover the 14th fret on the D and the G string. So it's D string, then the 14th fret on the e, uh, G string. Then back to the 14 on the D string. Yeah. Then to the 12 on the G string. And then we're going to another 14 bend on the G, 12, 12 on the B, E. So now we have. Now we're going back, back to the 14 on the G string with a bend up, release and pull off. Yeah to the 12 and now the next part is 14 on the D string 14 on the G string 12 on the G string then 14 on the D pull off to the 12 on the D back to the 14 on the D. But you can hear her. that bit's quicker. Okay, let's try and run that slowly again. So fast. Okay, 
Okay, so now we're gonna bend on from the 14th fret on the top E string. And as you release it, you wanna do the 12th fret on the B string and then arch that over and get the 12th fret on the top E string. And then arching even further, 12th fret on the G string. And then skipping a string, you're going to the A string on the 14th fret. Great little lick. Verse eight, big chunky noisy time. Again, do you like this sound? So this is the 14th fret on the D string, third finger. Second finger is on the uh, 13th fret on the G string. Your first finger is on the 12th fret on the B string. Yeah. And then you grab your first finger and then you put it onto the 12th fret on the G string. And then you sort of pull it into the, from the minor into the major. And then 14th fret on the D string with your third finger. And don't be afraid if you catch the B string on the 12th fret as well. It just adds the, to the energy of it. Okay, the next lick, more energy still. So again, it's the same shape as before. 14 on the D string, 13 on the G string, 12 on the top E, uh, on the B string. Except this time to end it, you move to get the 14th fret on the G string whilst holding and bending, whilst holding the 12th fret on the uh, B string. So it goes. And now from there, that is just another bend from the 14 on the G string. A 12 on the B, 12 on the E. And then go moving on to the B string, 15th fret a bend. Then after that, it goes to a 12 on the uh, B string, and then back to the 15 on the B string and bends it. So to go through from the whole section so far. And so the next lick is one we've already done before. But this is, again, 15 bent up on the B string. To the 15 unbent. 12 on the B string. 14 on the G string. To the 12 on the B string. To the 12 on the G string. To the 14 on the D string. Slowly. So this is another lick that I particularly like. It's kind of a, it got some nice little stoppy bits in it. So it's 12 on the G string, hammering onto the 13 on the G string. So again, going from the minor to that major feel. 12 on the B string, 12 on the top E string, 14 on the top E string with a slight bend. Then back to the 12 on the top E string. Then back to the 12 on the B string. And then it's a 14 on the G string with a slight bend up. To the 12 on the B string, back to the 14 on the G string. Okay. Then back to the 12 on the G string, hammering onto the 13 again, 
and then your B and your E string together. So the next lick is a bit of a jumpy one. And what that is is 12 to 14 on the B string, 12 to 14 on the top E string, but with a bend on the 14. Then to the 12 on the E, to the 12 on the B. Then to the 14 on the G, to the 12 on the B again. Then 12 on the G, but with a bend. And then you miss a string, so down to the 14 on the A string. But that, that kind of bend from the ma minor to the major is quite important, I think, on this one. So the next thing. This is a bend from the 15 on the top E string, then just the 15, then 12 on the E string, 15 on the B string, 12 on the top E string. I do this like vibrato on that E there. So we've got that. And that leads into 15 on the B string, 12 on the B string, 15 on the G string, 14 on the B string, on the G string, 12 on the G string, 14 on the D string. So now we've got. Then it's another 14, I think, on the G string. Then it's 12s on the uh, G and the B string. And a cheeky little hammer on to that 13 on the G string. And then skip a string down to the 14 on the A string. And now we're into the final section, section nine. So after you've done that big high energy bit, you've got to suddenly pull that energy back. Okay, and that is 12 on the B string to the 14. The hammer on, so it's two of the 12. To the 12 on the top of E string. Then a 14 with a bend on the top E string. Yeah, that's a really slow, smooth bend. Okay, and then you've got the same sort of pattern again, 12 to 14 on the B, 12 to 14 on the uh, E. But it's a quicker bend. And then it goes to the 14 on the B. Back to the 12 on the E. Two of those, and then another cheeky quick bend on the 14 on the top E. So to look at that is. So now we're up to the big rock star moment from the 17th fret on the top E string. Big bend, right? Then it's. So that is, so it's a bend from the 17 on the top E string. Back to a released 17, 15. Then back up to 17 with a pull off to the 15. Yeah. Then to a 17 on the B string with a, with a double sort of really quick. And then to the 15 on the top E string. So, and that 15's got a slight push in it as well. A slight bend, so. 
And now we're going to do a lick which is really super similar, if not virtually identical to what we've already done before. So now we're going to go bend on the 15 on the top E. Release that. So the 15, 12 on the top E, 15 on the B, 12 on the B, bend the 14 on the G, up, down, release to the 12, and then 14 on the D, 14 on the G, 14 on the D. And then it's 12 to the 13 on the G. Then it's 14 on the uh, D string, and then to the 14 on the B, on the A string. And now we are on to... This is a nice little lick, I do like this one. So this is 12 on the B string to the 14. So it's two on the 12 to the hammer on to the 14. 12 on the top E, 14 on the top E with a slight bend, to the 12 on the top E, 12 on the B, to the 14 on the G, so, and then back to the 12 on the B, back to the 12 on the G, with a slight bend, to the 14, on the D, so I, I just like that, it's quite cheeky. The next lick, okay. So, this is jumping strings. This one, so it is 14 on the G string, bent up, uh, released, and then pulled to the 12 to the 14 on the D to the 14 on the G, 12 on the G, yeah, this is where we jump the string to the 14 on the A string, to the 12 on the A string, and now we're back to a lick we did right near the start. Okay, so this is 15 on the B string bent up, released, 12 on the B string, 14 on the G, 12 on the B, 12 on the um, G, again, slight bend whenever you're there, and then a 14 on the uh, D. That clawing over on the 12 can be tricky sometimes. It's trying to do it so it's fairly clean. And here we go, the big finale. Can't believe you've made it this far. Well done. Okay, we are at 12th fret on the top, on the B string. 14th fret on the B string, 12th on the top E string, 14th on the top E string. Now, we, we did repeat the pattern, but we don't go back to the 12th on the B. We go just go back to the 14 on the B. 14 on the B, 12 on the top E, 14 on the top E, back to the 14 on the B, 12, 14 on the E, so it goes. And then slight cheeky bend at the end. So let's go through that slowly. Here we go, the big ending. You deserve a nice piece of cake or something if you've made it this far, well done. So that big ending is, like what we've done very on near, near the beginning of the song. So it is second finger on the eighth fret on the A string, first finger on the seventh fret on the D string, and your third finger on the uh, eighth fret on the G string, basically the dominant seven, and then slide it all down on. Like 
kind of slides into that first chord. And again, if you catch that B string, it actually sounds quite nice. And one more time for the road. Well done, thank you for joining me on this epic lesson um, of me, of the version that I do. Now I know there's lots of different versions out there. I'm gonna put this disclaimer in again. Uh, this might not be absolutely perfect to the track, but it's the way I've heard it, it's the way I've interpreted it, and it's the way that I play it. Um, it's pretty close, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and thank you for joining us here on this channel. If you do like the content here, always giving it a thumbs up is a beautiful way to show it it lets other guitarists uh, know that it's here and so they can come and find these lessons too thank you very much and happy playing